Good evening, and welcome to the Select Board meeting of November 26, 2018. I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.32 p.m. Um, so we'll start with our opening remarks, the announcements, and agenda review. Um, I'll start with the agenda review, although we have our agenda in a particular order, we'll probably take it a little out of the sort of top to bottom order because there's some folks that are here to, to uh, attend to their particular items. Uh, so we'll try to keep those folks from waiting uh, as best we can. Um, are there any additions or changes that anyone on the board needs to make about the agenda for tonight? Um, if not, is there anyone here for public comment other than for an item that's on the agenda? Okay, so I think what we'll do first um, is go to our licenses, public way, and meter parking reservations uh, because we have two items for a change one for a change of manager um, for the PFW of the U.S. Incorporated Rural Sanders post number 754. Uh, and so we'll start with that. So if uh, the manager in question would come forward to us, please. Um, like to take a moment to introduce yourself to us, uh, tell us a little bit about the change that's happening, and then we'll probably ask you a few questions about where we are with the application for the change manager. All right, Mr. Uh, my name is Kevin Niva. I uh, moved here to go to UMass a few years ago. Um, I've been a member of the BFW about a year after I moved here. Uh, started taking over, helping out, done a lot of handyman work there, helped out with picking up any supplies and things to use there and you just slowly end up taking over the place and now we need to do an official on paper. Uh, I was told that you guys needed a or requested a roster of the membership and I can provide that for you here tonight, but I'm not supposed to furnish that for any outside things, so I can give it to you tonight to look over, but uh, I need it back tonight I can't have any copies made up. So just hand it to the joint on the end there if you would please. So I think that at this point, thank you. Um, and so if the board has questions for um, the applicant, we'll take those at this point. Mr. Steinberg. Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, I didn't get a chance to look at the uh, item you handed me uh, in detail, as I just glanced at it. Our, um, I, I'm making an assumption, but one confirmation that um, because it's a veterans organization, because the age at which most people have served and become veterans, that um, you don't normally or wouldn't expect to have members who are not um, 21 years of age. Uh, usually by the time, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, usually by the time they exit um, the service and you get to us, they spent a few years in the service and they're generally when they age 21. Years. I have not seen one person come in and apply for membership for those at the age of 21. They could become a member, but they wouldn't be allowed to meet the ANC portion of it. Uh, are you getting to the issue that I'm asking about? Because of the second part was whether there's anybody who would be underage who might arrive to drink and what your process and procedures, policies are on how you enforce uh, state law in that regard? Uh, so any, the staff all know the members that do come down and any non-member that comes down, the guests of the members have to sign in the guest book and all those are subject to being 
ID unless they're very evidently above the age of 21, we know they have their ID on them. Um, so we, suffice to say, we ID everyone that comes out with a member, and if we, if we don't know that they're above the age of 21. Do you use any scanning equipment or uh, have any uh, policies to make sure that you have training to spot an appropriate uh, illegal uh, right um, so we have a information poster that points <coughs> out uh, the common signs of counterfeit ID we have that posted the employees look over we also go over um, some of the common things <coughs> cheaply laminated or uh, things like that a lot of the problems that we do the ones that we do encounter are people that come in with a temporary license that very clearly says not valid for identification purposes, and they try to pass that off, and we just throw them out and tell them it's a hard no. Um, but as far as scanning equipment, um, I've looked into it, and it seems like the low end ones are generally two or three hundred dollars, and high end ones that can tell you if it's a repeat ID that someone handed off to their friend and they're bringing it back in those run more in range of nine hundred or thousand dollars. So. Um, not that we don't have one right now. Uh, I intend to get one, but it's a matter of uh, finding a used one or something that we can better afford. I, I mean, I think that's, uh, and I appreciate your vigilance to the issue. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not going to lie to you and say that nobody comes down. It does happen. seriousness I appreciate the seriousness with which you're looking at this because we would not want your establishment like any other establishment to become known as a place where people can go and that has happened with other establishments over time and so we appreciate your attention to that so that you don't develop that reputation all right are there any other questions for the To approve it, <coughs> I move to approve a change of manager for VFW of US Incorporated Earl Sanders Post 754 457 Main Street, Kevin Diva, manager. Second. Do a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming down. So next we'll take up this. Yeah, I believe somebody came in for a second after the public comment. Is there a Okay. Thank you. Sure. We'd like to make a public comment. And just as a general rule, we so not that you don't know this, but for folks at home, we usually limit to about three minutes. Uh, and we usually don't comment on the comment. So we'll right. take it under advisement. So please. First, th thanks for making the exception. Arrived early for the meeting, and then I noticed there was a sign that said, you know, so I had to make my way down here. The, uh, it's not nostalgia that brings me here. I realize this may be the last meeting, but uh, I would like to try it out. It would be nice to sit sometimes with something. Um, the reason I'm here is that this time of year, as I think all times of year, uh, people who depend on public transit extra dependent on it now. Inclement weather, cold weather, difficulty getting around on foot, bikes, whatever. So I realize that it's been a while since uh, we've talked about this in a public meeting. I just wanted to make it on the public record that I trust the uh, chair and the meeting. I think it's the PTA rep will make it uh, this top priority to ensure that we restore and improve the public transit service. Months and uh, I'm here to support you. It's the manager knows. We need it all. 
altered it any time, I'm happy to step in and help you out. So, so that's I'm basically here to encourage you to continue on. I realize the rest of you, some of you will be on the council, some of you will be cheering on the side. So So next up, we'll take uh, the change of manager Deborah M. Hermanis and change of doing this uh, of DBA from Lord Jeffrey N. to N. at Fullwood. So if you'd like to come up and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the changes occurring, and the opportunity to kind of do a small advertisement. Um, so. well, my name is Deborah Hermanis. I'm the general manager for the Lord Jeffrey N. In on board work. Um, we are obviously changing the name, which has created the necessity for the change in DBA. Um, and then I have stepped in to the role of general manager. Um, Fabio Cari Di Mariva took a position in Florida and is no longer with the property. Um, I've been with the property for about six years now. Um, I'm a graduate of the University of Massachusetts Hospitality Program and have spent the last 20 something years in the industry. Thank you. Do you have questions at all for changes that are happening? Mr. Yeah, I guess the questions that I have are similar to the questions I was asking previously. Um, but we always like to hear a little bit because of concerns about the number of underage uh, people who are interested in alcohol within our community. Um, to hear a little bit about what your standard procedures are and how you um, train and supervise um, employees who are in the position of serving alcohol. Um, we require all of our service representatives that will serve alcohol to be fully tip certified. Um, so we do put them through that certification. Um, we also proactively ID anybody under the age of 40 for the most part. Um, and we um, have a fleet of trained service people that are, that are looking for that opportunity knowing that we're in a college town, which is a bit of a hot spot. Fortunately, we're not too much on their radar, so we don't um, we don't have too much of an issue with it. But we are very proactive in that respect. And that applies. And how do you apply that when you're doing um, events, weddings, and things like that? All of those service staff are fully tip certified as well. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? If not, then um, I'd entertain a motion for the manager and change of the doing business ads. Um, I move to approve the change of manager and the change of doing business as DBA for Lord Jeffrey in to in a, on Boltwood, 30 Boltwood Avenue, Deborah M. Herman's manager. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So that's unanimous. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you for coming down. Yes. So I have a question um, about our agenda. So as we frequently do, we received additional information tonight, and it's very helpfully marked, revised, and highlighted. So we have a new agenda. We have a new motion sheet. We have new other things. But what I'm, what I'm confused by is that our original agenda What's had on? this attachment for licenses, and the new agenda has this attachment. And I'm wondering, if, I'm thinking this is an addition to, not in place of, but, but I'm not sure. I'm not either, I don't tell you. So I didn't know. Take a moment and we'll compare and contrast and see if we can see. Who's uh, the question about the consent? Yeah. Well, from the standpoint of we had oh. one attachment mm -hmm. okay. came in that the packet, I the other one came tonight, and I don't know if you catch the one guys. tonight includes all these plus more, or if they're two separate ones. Or <coughs> <coughs> plus so, uh, as Mel says, that this the, the one that you received tonight with the yellow is in place of the one that was. We can toss this. Thank you. No, thank you very much. Just wanted to be well. sure. All right. Well, we'll come back to that a little later. Yes. Um, so next on our 
uh, on our agenda. We'll go back to our action discussion items. We'll take up the public sheet tree regulations. Or do you want to do the proclamation? Oh, sorry, thank you. We'll do the Human Rights Day proclamation instead, since we looked at the regular public sheet tree people aren't. So please, if you'd like to come up and tell us a little bit about it, not that we don't know, but it's an opportunity to sort of share and, and uh, do a little bit of an advertisement for them. Well, my name is Elizabeth Kahn, and I'm really pleased to be a commissioner of the Human Rights Commission in Amherst, Massachusetts. And so I'm here to read the proclamation of 2018 Human Rights Day. <clears throat> Whereas Human Rights Day is observed annually each December 10th, commemorating the day on which, in 1948, the United Nations General Assembly adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Amherst celebrates this day with a communal reading of the Declaration on the Common at 4 o'clock p.m. Please join us. Residents of Amherst have expressed their belief in and commitment to protecting the human rights we all share by consistently adopting actions that demonstrate the values we hold as a community. In 2009, the town meeting adopted a human rights bylaw establishing the Human Rights Commission and asserting that it shall be the policy of the town that no person, public or private, shall be denied any rights guaranteed pursuant to local, state, and or federal law on the basis of race or color, gender, physical or mental ability, religion, socioeconomic status, ethnic or national origin, affectional or sexual preference, lifestyle, or age. In 2011, this definition was expanded to additionally include gender identity or expression and genetic information. Town meeting has also adopted a sanctuary community bylaw, established Race Amity Day, and authorized the select board to file special legislation seeking the ability to provide local voting rights for legal permanent residents residing in Amherst so that residents may vote in local elections and be elected to local offices in the community in which they live. It has passed resolutions to create a human rights culture, to assist in the safe resettlement of clear Guantanamo detainees, and to not do business with the state of Arizona due to its immigration laws. The Select Board has issued annual proclamations in support of Black History Month, Puerto Rico Heritage Month, and Human Rights Day, and has deliberated upon and endorsed all of the previously stated town meeting actions. The Select Board has participated in the annual Martin Luther King Jr. Breakfast and the Human Rights Commission Human Rights Heroes Award celebrations. These actions collectively reinforce the town of Amherst's dedication to the fundamental proposition of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, that each one of us, everywhere and at all times, is entitled to the full range of human rights and that it is every person's responsibility to uphold them. They bind us together as a global community. As a select board, we have always embraced every opportunity to reflect and embody these values in our work for the community. We do so again today. Be it resolved that the select board of the town of Amherst does hereby proclaim Monday, December 10th, 2018 as Human Rights Day in Amherst. Any questions or comments from the board? Well, I was just thinking, as, uh, so eloquently read us the statement, how it almost seems quaint and archaic given what's been going on in our country. So it's like we have these values, and we try to represent them in what we do here locally, but it feels like. Um, Compared to what's going on um, with the rest of the you know, state of Arizona, we might as well name, <laughs> we might as well create a list. So it's just kind of, you know, that was nice. Maybe yes. a year, you know, we usually yes. just sort of revamp the same one. So it, it seems to me that while it's probably be freezing cold out, that it's particularly important for people who want to participate to come on December 10th to help join in that uh, statement of what our values are and how uh, we don't see them reflected by our own government. Um, so thank you for doing that. Well, thank you. I really love being on the commission, even though a lot of what we do is very behind the scenes, you know, but I love reading the declaration. It's a wonderful opportunity to stand with other people and say these values out loud. And I will be there, and I hope that you will be there as well. Since this is such a great compilation of the various things town meeting, et cetera, has done, it would be also awesome to 
double check our records at some point associated with this mm -hmm. and then for example the select board is also done to that you know as consistently but um, we have been doing a proclamation for that too mainly for the future to make sure that those things continue to cycle back yes. to the council right. Um, right. to make sure that, that those continue to happen each year and I know we have an excellent calendar mm -hmm. we keep track mm -hmm. of it Ms. Mills will be keep, keeping track of and this is terrific we're right. not right. complaining at all but it just popped into my head that that's one that we could make sure was on in the catalog so to speak to make it clear that we do want to do these recognitions thank you and since we're across the street, we're at the police station tonight instead of town hall, and we're across the street from First Churches. It's also important that we recognize that our community has um, had someone whose name is Lucio Press. We're uh, living at the church for over a year now. Um, and uh, again, I think that that's um, an extraordinary human rights issue. and. Uh, one that uh, we remain uh, resolved to provide him refuge um, until it's no longer necessary and hope that that day comes soon. So if someone would like to read our, our motion to formally make the proclamation of the day. I move to proclaim Sunday, December 10, 2018, is Human Rights Day in the town of Amherst. Like Monday. Monday. Monday, I'm sorry. It says Sunday. It says Sunday, but you're right, it is Monday. I, I was hoping it was the motion that was written. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to make that clear for. It is Monday. It's Monday. Because it is a great event, we have people to come, and we don't want them to come on the wrong day, so thank you for the correction. <laughs> Monday at 4. Is there a second? Second. There was. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And that's unanimous. Thank, thank, thank you very much. So I think what we'll do is, is under our current transition of some zoning bylaw, um, recommendations to us um, and so since those folks are here and their staff and they're waiting we'll have them come up and, and we'll walk us through some of that a little bit and so that's uh, 7 B I I I or 4 B I I I I think I did that right yeah so So we are here tonight to request that the select board refer the bylaw review committee's um, recommendations uh, to change the zoning bylaw um, as required by the charter. Uh, essentially, it's non substantive changes. Um, in certain places, the zoning bylaw refers to the select board um, or town meeting, um, and there won't be a select board or town meeting um, a week, as of a week from today or a week from yesterday. Um, that, that's part of the bylaw review committee's charge. In your packet, you had a, a list of all of the changes, um, and what I just handed out is there was a typographical error, so some of the changes in 10.02 um, were not accurately shown, were crossed out, um, but the handout shows the corrected version, uh, red line version of the zoning bylaw, as it will be presented to the planning board. Um, so we are requesting that you transfer the entire zoning bylaw, which being out of 115 pages, I didn't want to overwhelm you with all that, given that these were the entirety of the changes. Um, thought it would be 
more easy to read and, and less paper intensive just to give you the changes. However, I do have a copy, um, a digital copy, so if you want to pull them up, um, I can do that as well. Uh, both redline version, clean version of the recommendations, as well as the current version of the zoning bylaw. Do you have anything you want to add at this point? Um, well, currently the planning board is um, hoping to hold a public hearing on December 12th on, the, on, this, uh, on this issue if you uh, do choose to refer the zone bylaw to me. Questions, Ms. Brewer? So I am <clears throat> concerned that we received a document called Zoning Bylaw Recommendations. It's from the Bylaw Review Committee that's not dated, doesn't say who the Bylaw Review Committee is doesn't have page numbers, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a little bit harder for us to deal with this in comparison to some other things that say public shade tree regulations as of such and such date by such and such people. So I would just like that to not happen again. But luckily, it's our last meeting. So I <laughs> guess that won't happen to us again. But um, we recycled you, though. Still, You'll be around. <laughs> still concerned about that, that we're getting documents like that. Um, I would like us, given especially since there's no cover or explanation, beyond the bylaw review committee as to the provenance of this or the date. I think it would be helpful for us to have a short cover memo on this, Mr. Slaughter, that um, whether you could work that out with Mr. Bachman, that basically says the part, the technical part, which we know about from all our previous work on the select board about moving it over to the planning board, like anything anybody brought us that's zoning related. But I'd also like it to be clear that we, we call out a couple of points associated with that, and so maybe if somebody is of that we could include that and mainly the thrust of it being we are not endorsing any of these changes we are leaving it to them to sort it out just like we do when somebody bring used to bring us a zoning petition and we automatically gave it to the planning board we didn't say oh we think that's a really good idea we just said the planning board's job now and then it came back to the select board later after the planning board did their hearing it did all their due diligence so i just don't want anyone to think that we unless we do express opinions tonight that we are particularly fond or not fond of any particular recommendations here. It's really just a technical. We're moving along. Yes. So we can. Uh, we, we will put a cover memo with this referencing the title of the documents, reference the two documents you have in front of you, and, and the three documents you have in front of you. We'll put that on the website tomorrow morning. Yeah. Okay. Not that I want too much because I hadn't really noticed the point that Mr. Brewer made, but I just reminded me of um, at a prior job um, somebody told me every document has to be a standalone document so as this gets separated from this meeting in this packet it does make sense to identify it because someone pulls it out or sees it it doesn't have a meaning unless it can be somewhat kind of self-explanatory in and of itself even though we have the context so it sounds kind of hard but it reminds relative to the changes. Yes. Would you like a statement about what the bylaw review committee is? Would that be helpful? And what its origin was? Perhaps Mr. Um, Mr. Kravitz could give a brief summary. Go ahead. We could from the standpoint of what Ms. Kruger was just referring to, but it, it remains that there is a bylaw review committee. This was part of their task. And so, although we weren't sure at first if it was going to be part of the task or not, the zoning bylaw was. And so I don't necessarily think that's helpful in that you're going to be explaining that to the, to the planning board as well. And so I'm not sure that's as essential as making it clear this isn't really our document, it's that body's document. Right. And it does say at the beginning that it's from the bylaw review committee, but I'm not averse to add words. I always like more people being sent to people. Um, I do have some additional points Please. about this. So one is in regards to the handout we received tonight, trying mm -hmm. to super speed read that. Actually, it's not the same in 10.01 as it is in this document because it crosses out the four, you know, the, both the number four and the word four 
in 10.01 for associate members. It says five members and now it says blank associate members mm -hmm. because the way it's crossed out. No, it's, I, I think you're seeing it's that a, as a cross out, it's but a it's court. actually merging okay. into the four. We had that so we're trying before. to say the four because yeah. the new charter four. uses digits rather than words. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it just looks like it's cut out, but it's really not. Because the version we have has both. Yeah. The right. blue one yeah. we have has optical delusion. Right. So yeah. <laughs> optical yeah. delusion, yes. So it's supposed to say four. So then that brings me to my next question. So that that clear this handout clarifies that. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's great. My concern is that I don't have any reason to believe that's a good idea in terms of um, having five members and four associate members. And so four associate members was obviously based on three full time members. And so this is simply one of those things that. Lots of discussion could take place around, I'm sure could be really useful. I certainly don't believe that the bylaw review committee would have been able to have that conversation to the point that I would have been satisfied with it, but I'm sure the planning board can. And so they can have that discussion and make that recommendation and obviously then it would go to the council. But those numbers are, again, it's, it's the charter says five, it doesn't say four associate members and so I think that the idea of recruiting nine people to serve on the Zoning Board of Appeals when they're already freaking out about finding five people to serve on it is um, an interesting conundrum and and perhaps is is I'm a little concerned that the bylaw review committee is recommending that whereas on the planning board mm -hmm. side it says in the current bylaw that you can have two associate members to go with the nine current planning board members. So that's been changed to seven. The two at least is carried over. One might argue, well, you know, the number's different. But um, again, I'm just, I, you know, I'm not sure where the, the part about having an opinion from the bylaw review committee versus just updating things to show the accurate information that's in the charter, I think are two separate things that I've been a little concerned mm -hmm. about the crossover there in terms of potential overreach as to what those assumptions would be based on. Well, similarly, I didn't well, I didn't know what this was, but um, I, I don't understand why, I guess this is to go to council for a proposed change that's come, I don't have any background in this, but it's always my, well, maybe you could tell us, Mr. Kravitz, or Ms. Briscoff, and then I had a comment. Um, I think it's similar to a warrant review before town meeting in that there should be um, a reference to the Mass General Laws that we were advised that the select board needed to refer to the planning board before they could hold a public hearing. Okay, so it's like getting the ball started for the public time. So if I could just make it, was this because I probably won't be part of that dialogue. I had always understood the reason we had the associate members for the zoning board is because our bylaw required three of three members to vote to um, pass something, and if one of them couldn't be there, that was a real problem because action couldn't be hap couldn't happen. But with five members and a three-member voting majority, it may or may not eliminate the need for the associate members. And um, I'm not sure. You know, I'd have to think about associate members for planning board, but. Um, I would need to be convinced, but just I didn't know what this was or where it came from. So it's coming from the bylaw review committee as a first action in order to get it before the planning board. Because this would be a zoning bylaw change, which is okay. I just kind of get my head around it. Thank you. I don't know if we've given a very good explanation or summary of what this is about, but it's really the bylaw review committee was tasked with looking at the general bylaw and the zoning bylaw and making whatever um, changes or recommendations were absolutely mandated by the charter. And they were not tasked with looking at any of the peculiarities or um, difficulties with our current zoning bylaw. So they didn't look at the bylaw in terms of its substance. They merely looked at it in terms of changing the word select board to either town manager and town council or they looked at it to say, now we're going to be seven. So the charter board has members. these numbers. The charter, um, the charter doesn't have these numbers, but the, the bylaw review committee was not tasked with making sure that um, 
the bylaw was perfect, but the, the task group was making sure that the bylaw comported with the charter in its, um, what, its, whatever the by, whatever the charter was stating was incorporated into the bylaw. And later on, you know, every two weeks, the town council can choose to look into various aspects of this bylaw and change it if they feel that it's necessary or if the planning board brings to them um, a concern. And the concern that you're raising tonight is certainly something that I would bring to the planning board. But that, that particular item is really beyond the scope of what the bylaw review committee was, was tasked with, in my opinion. Just to be perfectly clear, the, the, the real changes in, in regard to this um, existing by law has three members with four associates and nine uh, planning board members with two associates that may be appointed. So that those associate memberships are exactly as they were. There's no real change to that. So the, and so the bylaw review committee was not making any statement as to whether it's good, bad, or otherwise. They just said the current charter as we have it from last March doesn't say anything in either direction relative to associate members, and so that's a point that will need to be um, debated essentially by the planning board as they as they take this up. And really, they were just saying, well, we know we have to change from three to five for ZPA, and we need to know from, need to go from nine to seven for the planning board because that's expressly in the charter. And associate member piece, we don't understand. Yes. Nonetheless, there are a couple of things. One is we need to somehow communicate in this cover memo that at least to the best of my knowledge, we've not had two associate members for the planning board in the entire 20 years I've been paying attention. So that, be that as it may, that it's allowed. I'm not arguing it's not allowed. I just want it to be clear that we haven't availed ourselves of it for over 20 years. We may decide we want to. This may be the perfect time to do so. But I absolutely believe that someone who doesn't know anything about our bylaw looking at this is going to say, okay, sure, that sounds good. They just transferred the numbers over, except we don't have to right now. And so I'm sure the planning board will get into that level of detail, but just as a standalone document, it makes it seem like you're just doing the same thing. You're just plugging your numbers, but there aren't two associate members of the planning board now, and there haven't been for decades. So that seems worth noting. And then the other part is, even though you're just plugging numbers in, again, we've heard substantial criticism of the number of CBA member, members from the standpoint of difficulty recruiting. We, in fact, have openings on that body right now. And the idea that it's assumed that we have to have four associate members just because we're plugging numbers over, I would argue, okay, well, what if we don't update the bylaw? What if we just follow what the charter says and have five CBA members and seven planning board members. Right. No, Who's going to say, well, oh, your bylaw's out of date. Oh, you need to be sued for that. So I'm not really clear that, you know, the council is going to be looking at this every single week for the next forever. Right. And so that they'll need to understand a level of priority that the planning board believes this has. So the planning board may just say, you know what, we'll talk more about that, but please just plug these numbers in, and that, that's okay. But I would just like them to be thinking about how to effectively communicate that to the council and the public. Yes, Ms. Preston. So the planning board is going to um, create a document to pass on to the town council that um, lists many of the things that they've talked about over the years that need to be corrected or changed in the zoning bylaw, and this could be added to that list. So um, there's not really an opportunity right now at this point to um, confront all of those issues, and that would be one of the issues that they can add to the list. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. So just to, to be clear, I'm talking about a sort of cover memo. One is that we make clear the point that this is a, a technical transfer of information, not really an endorsement or either for or against the, the technical changes. The second thing is changes um, you know, that, that, and this is just a matter of clarification, is that what's been recommended by the Bylaw Review Committee are just changes only to the base membership of those two boards, the CBA and the Planning Board, um, not anything relative to the associated. Um, a third point that was, was brought was uh, the two associated associate Planning Board members have not been in existence for a long time, and so whether that's still valid, um, but any of the any of the changes or recommendations relative to this, these particular points of associate membership 
um, need to be communicated clearly and effectively um, to the council and perhaps with, with some uh, urgency um, so that we're not in some strange space trying to fill seats that we ultimately don't really think we need. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess the other question I would have, I'm going through the bullet points here, are there other comments relative to the other changes that, that need to be brought to the attention of the planning board as we transfer this to them that we notice as far as things that have a bit more urgency? Because I, I think that that technicality of the associate membership isn't addressed expressly in the, in the charter. Should that, you know, that it, it begs the question, should we just adjust the numbers in, in the in Article 10 relative to the appointments of those two boards, or should we take them out completely? I mean, it's sort of, it's an interesting space to be in, um, in some respects, as to whether to make that edit or not. So I, I think that if there are other edits that raise similar sorts of, you know, conflicts or questions for folks, we should communicate that as well to the planning board. So, yes. So uh, did the bylaw committee see that as a substantive change, that they didn't want to adjust the, the associate membership because it wasn't addressed in the charter, or did they have that conversation? Um, the bylaw review committee felt that it was the role of the planning board to recommend substantive changes, and therefore didn't even consider changing the number of associate members or making any sort of recommendation mm -hmm. that was outside of the building. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's useful for them to communicate to the planning board associated with that and also eventually then because that will eventually flow to the council to understand that they were just trying to stay in their lane but saying mm -hmm. somebody's going to have to deal with this you, know, you guys decide when is the right time to deal with it so on a different topic associated with this one of the things that unfortunately I asked staff and yes staff agreed to do which is they're probably regretting even now is under section 7.104 dimensions making and delineation. It refers to the street and site work construction standards that were adopted by the select board. And I was like, the oh, what now? And so I am so pleased to say that staff dug this up from 1972 with some number signatures that we rec that we recognize here. Um, as far as I know, this select board's never seen this document, and that's fine, and it's going on to the town council. But it's just one of the things that when the select board gets invoked, I want to know, <laughs> like, uh, did we actually do something with that? And the answer is no. And so I think it's worth just you know, maybe including this with the cover memo that says, we haven't done anything with the street and site work construction standards as a select board in forever. But so it it's not been, unlike a later conversation we're going to have when we belabor the public shade tree committee regulations for a long time, that was something we actively worked on. We've not worked on this like ever as the select board. So we're glad that it's being changed, right, to show the accurate number, but we also don't want to give any, anyone the impression that we actually did anything to them while they were still under our purview since we kind of didn't even really know they were there. So that may be something that you want to leave alone and not um, change to town council because those street and sidewalk construction standards were adopted by a previous select board. A long time ago, I'm going to say, mm -hmm. I don't even know what the date 1972. is. 1972. 1972. So it was adopted by the select board. It hasn't been adopted by town council. Right. And so that would be a, perhaps the judgment of the town manager mm -hmm. and Mr. Kravitz as to whether that should remain select board until such time as we have a new street and sidewalk construction standards, which we are hoping to work on with DPW. And then it would be adopted by town council. That's really adopted by select board. It's really just a statement of fact. It's not. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not a uh, current endorsement of. Right. Right. Whereas if you say town council, it's sort of it implies, implies they they've took done a something, <laughs> which right. is right. not something they've done. So it becomes sort of archival. I mean, it still exists. Right. It's still, in a sense, in force until otherwise acted on. Right. Like so many things. Right. Many of those. I think the mission of the bylaw review committee was to extricate the word select the yeah. word select board from sure. the document. So I don't think you can reference select board. Um, and probably makes sense because the planning board wants to recommend to, to 
do something like that, they could do that, but they'd have to choose another body that would have to approve those things. We have to be consistent on right, right of way, rights of way, right of way. I saw that. <laughs> I, I caught that. Yeah. <coughs> so, yeah. Okay. One's capitalized, one's hyphenated. Yes. Is that that? Is this? Oh, that is a good question. HC's third paragraph, it says section E. Is that E or is it F? Yes, it is E because there. planting okay. and the trees. Right. On page five, okay, so under B, okay, should, yeah. should be made in accordance. The determination whether to allow the planting shall be made in accordance with section E, planting. Okay, not F, because okay. F is oh, prohibited. So e. All right, so, so that's it's correct. It's correct. Okay, and you, you know, okay, it was so, it was accurate. the public shade tree regulations as amended at the November 26, 2018 final select board meeting. You're going to start adding finals to everything. Oh, cool. Penultimate. Penultimate. Can we include that in every motion? Penultimate. Is there a second? Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh man. Uh, is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 For the reluctant one. Two, three, four, five, six, five, six versions, something like that. We've been through. So we should have this one. All of those in the back of her car. This which is pretty amazing. We got there. Well, I, I think it is a lesson to be learned or to be promulgated to the councils that you know changing or creating a regulation, especially from scratch, is is a uh, non-trivial process because there's a lot of subtlety and, and nuance. I like that. We've got a lot of good. All right. Let's see. Moving on. So charter transition um, update and topics for future council consideration. Sure. Um, Uh, so, uh, the inauguration swearing, inaugural swearing-in ceremony is scheduled for uh, Sunday, December 2nd at 1 p.m. Uh, we will be putting out a press release tomorrow on this. Uh, I need to check the quote with you, Mr. Chair. Um, what could I say now? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, said, you said. <laughs> so, it's at 1 o'clock on Sunday, December 2nd at the Amherst Regional High School, and we encourage everyone to attend. It's free, open to the public, we encourage attendance. Um, we'd like you to uh, give us a head count. If you can, go to our website. You can uh, answer a few quick questions so we know how many people are coming and what groups are being represented. Uh, we're trying to get as many community groups to be present as possible. The, um, and there will, the ceremony itself will be followed by a reception with a lot of great food uh, for all tastes. Um, from We think the reception will go, the event will go from about 1 to 2.30, and the reception will go from about 2.30 to 4. Uh, just some, some highlights is that we've uh, requested, and she's agreed to have Nancy Eddy, former select board chair, um, and uh, served on a dozen of other things for the town, and also a founding member of the Mass Municipal Association will be the MC. Uh, Mr. Slaughter will, will say a few words. Um, Judge Collins, former representative, will be doing the official swearing in. Um, we've invited the, we've made this a really Am Amherst centric event. We really are focused on having people participate who are from Amherst, live in Amherst, um, have Amherst as their home. We aren't going outside uh, for, for any of the speakers. Uh, we really wanted it to be about Amherst. 
and that's why we're doing it at the high school and as part of um, a community event, because it is a community event. Um, uh, Matthew Charity, who is the chair of the um, Human Rights Commission and his attorney, will be the keynote speaker. Uh, Karen Schofield, who is a local poet, is writing a special poem for the, the occasion. We have a, a student from the high school, Carrington Dow, uh, who will be uh, providing the perspective from a, a student who lives in town. Uh, we have the Crocker Farm, fifth and sixth graders who will be singing. Uh, we have a, 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 a Torin Moore, who is a resident, who will be singing as well. Um, so it's, it sounds, it's going to be a really good event. Um, and we're trying to keep everybody to a couple minutes when they speak, and that's going to be the biggest challenge, but I think we'll, we'll uh, Nancy Eddy is known to crack a good whip, and so I think she will uh, keep everybody in line. Um, and so, so that's, kind of, that's pretty much the lineup, the types of things that we're um, anticipating for that day. Uh, the next day, uh, December 3rd at 8 p.m., which is an usual start time, but that'll be the, the start time for that first meeting is 8 p.m. in the town room in town hall. Uh, the council will have its first meeting, and the suggestion will be that each council member may have a few minutes to sort of give an individual speech for themselves uh, that will be on broadcast live on Amherst Media. And, and, um, so I think that that's a, a good sort of segue into their job as being counselors. Uh, the town room is under construction right now as we prepare it to become the town council uh, meeting room. As it's, a, a, it's been under construction for several weeks now and it looks, it's looking really good. There'll be some new technology invested in there so um, we can make the meetings more um, focused with technology and so people who are attending or watching on TV will have a better idea of what's happening and where we are on the agenda. Um, the, um, and the, and the, the entire council chamber is being built by, for the most part, by local, um, by our own town staff. There are certain things that we're contracting out, like the painting and things like that. Um, but it look, I think if you, if you peek in there, uh, it looks really, really, really sharp. Um, so that's sort of where we are in terms of the transition. The uh, council has the council has a workshop this Thursday at 6:30 p.m. Uh, at the Bank Community Center. Uh, and that first floor is just as you walk off of Boldwood. Uh, it's right to the right where the, where some of the voting occurs. Um, we will have um, the. Um, our town attorney will have the bylaw review committee talking not about the substance, but just going through a little bit of the thick types of the way they approach their work. They have about 15 or 20 minutes to do their presentation. That will be followed by a training on the open meeting law, the public records law, and the state ethics law by our town attorney, Lauren Goldberg. It's an opportunity for council members who have already raised a lot of questions to ask the questions that they need to have answered so that they everybody stays within the um, bounds of the law because there are a lot of um, gray areas and I think having the town attorney there able to provide guidance, she's an expert in all these areas of law, will be really helpful to the council members. Uh, once they get sworn in, we want to make sure everybody observes and the law totally and um, that we, we as a community are, are very committed to open and transparent government. Um, the, follow, the next thing that will be coming up for the council is on Saturday, December 8th, is the um, four towns meeting at the Amherst Middle School Library uh, at 9 a.m. And council members are invited, and the general public is invited to attend that as well. And this is where there's a preview provided by the school administration about the school budget and where they stand on a number of things. So the council will be off to a running start. Um, at their first meeting, they will need to elect a president, uh, elect a vice president, appoint a clerk, uh, adopt temporary or uh, rules that they, they want to follow, i.e. using Robert's Rules of Order, um, and then also set a meeting date for the next time they want to meet. And we're hoping that, that they will choose the Monday two weeks later, which is December 17th, uh, but they can choose whatever date works for all their schedules. That will be up to them. 
the reason December 17th works is that that will be after the planning board has, has met and had their public hearing on the zoning bylaws. If this planning board happens to make a decision that night, that can be transferred right over to the, um, um, to the um, town council. But it also gives some time for people to, to have some time. The council could also meet on Monday, December 10th. We're, we're going to be encouraging the council to meet on Mondays in December and then choose whatever meeting schedule they want after the first of the year because uh, that helps us with our room scheduling in town hall. Um, the, uh, I guess I think that's pretty much it. If there are questions or concerns, things that I'm not thinking about right now. So I have two things. Yeah. One is I wanted to follow up because I, I think that you were considering a done deal was the Board of License Commissioners yes. material you gave us. Mm -hmm. So this is really good. You got all our edits. Thank you. I, I was like, yes, those are all the things we talked about. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And I think that this is very informative. And I did want to just mention while I could that I thought it was so interesting because you pulled in some additional information that you hadn't had in here before. And it says, as it says in the charter, five voters. It is literally the only thing the voters. that says voters. Yes. That is so weird. Is that strange? Yes. But because because it really clanked when I read it, and then but of course mm -hmm. you pulled it directly from there, and there literally was no other mention of it. So thank you so much for taking our um, our helpful input mm -hmm. on that and including that. And then I did have a question for you in terms of perhaps this is something you could advise the council about their meeting on the third, since it doesn't seem like we have time during the workshop. It's already jam packed on Thursday night. And that is one of the things that came up during many discussions associated with changes such as we are now undergoing, is when you show up at four towns meeting, no town meeting members ever came to four towns meetings. The council is a legislative body mm -hmm. with policy making authority. Mm -hmm. But now we have three towns who, if they get a good turnout, are sending select board members, school committee members, and finance committee members. At are our finance committee members that currently exist, except they won't exist anymore on the 8th, so they can't go. And of course we have our wonderful school committee members. But you know, you always went already. <laughs> and so there's no executive branch there beyond staff, which has always been really willing to go on Saturdays, which we really appreciate. No finance committee. Um, it's very strange that Amherst Right, so on the one hand, it's like if 13 people showed up, that would probably force them to get a different room because of the number. I mean, the library doesn't work very well for this particular meeting anyway, with depending on turnout. But I'm not really sure what that looks like then. And I wonder if you might think about, perhaps in consultation, with the regional school committee chair, because I always like to think of the four towns meeting as not a staff meeting, but as a regional school committee meeting. Um, they don't always think of it that way mm -hmm. because they have staff to do so much work for it. But um, to give people a sense from the council what their role is, because mm -hmm. aside from Mr. Steinberg and myself, I don't. Okay, now I'm now I'm guessing, but I don't believe any of them have ever been to one before. And they're not going to be in the same position as any of the other bodies. You know, we don't have those corresponding <coughs> colleagues mm -hmm. now. <coughs> it's it's going to be weird. Yeah. It will be different. I don't know if it will be weird, but I think one of the things that the, you know, the, I've had a conversation with the superintendent about was um, how to educate the council about the way things work in terms of the regional school yeah. district. And this is a really good way for people to hear the presentation by the school business manager, or the school finance director, and the school um, superintendent, and to sort of see how it all sort of, how people react to it. There are no decisions being asked of uh, at this meeting by any of the towns. Some, sometimes there are questions being posed to towns and asked for direction. Um, but I think um, one of the things we had suggested, or I've suggested to the uh, superintendent is that he may want to hold an additional session contingent uh, uh, either immediately prior or immediately after the four towns meeting to talk more with counselors because the school committee has expressed a lot of concern about how are they going to know what we about what we do and every board is saying that and it's a question that's going to be posed to the council 
how do you want to learn about all the different committees or about all the different departments that are under your jurisdiction as the legislative leaders of the town. Um, so I think there are some, uh, uh, you know, I, I defer to Mr. Steinberg because he's been handling this a lot on, in terms of the town, in terms of the regional school, but I think um, having our legislative body who's gonna be grappling with a lot of things, educated as best as possible on all the major school issues that the regional school district is, is facing, I think will be really uh, beneficial to the town. If I may, just to suggest a couple couple things. I think moving forward, you may not want the entire council to come, mm -hmm. but it might be wise, maybe they're, if they form a finance committee, that yeah. might be mm -hmm. wise, because that will have some authority of the, of the council mm -hmm. by virtue of having some councilors on it, yeah. most likely. Um, I think you're right, in this first go round, having all of them come is probably uh, an appropriate thing to do. The, the other thing that this conversation just prompted in my mind is, um, does the regional school amendment need to be amended because we've changed form of government? And the reason I ask that question is one of the things that happens with like capital projects is that there's a very specific sort of um, protocol that happens as far as notifying the select board and then they either can accept or reject essentially or um, those, those capital items. And, and so is that those particulars are sort of outlined, if I remember correctly, in the actual uh, regional agreement, which is not part of the town charter. So I didn't know how that plays out if you have. So the, the charter calls says in 10.7 says the Amherst School Committee shall negotiate an amendment to the existing regional school agreement bringing br to the existing regional school agreement bring its references to Amherst legislative and executive bodies into conformity with this charter. So that's up to the school committee to do that. Right. But they do need to do that fairly soon. Okay. Yeah. And how those other towns, I think they all have to approve it at the town meeting. Yes, the, uh, this actually is uh, one of these uh, questions that we're going to have to really work through. The amendment of the regional agreement, um, the way it is written now, has to be adopted by all four town meetings that, of the member communities. Uh, we won't have a town meeting at the time, so not only are we seeking an amendment, but we're assuming that the council, by virtue of uh, the law, uh, which is incorporated, becomes part of it, charter becomes part of the law, so, uh, substitutes the council for that role. Um, but I do think that it's important that we get agreement with the other three towns to just get the words changed so it works right before uh, we get too far down the line. As far as the issue that uh, Ms. Brewer raised, uh, I had also uh, raised that issue and discussed it. And, um, unfortunately, uh, we have a meeting on that doesn't start till 8 o'clock on the 3rd, um, ideally because that's the only meeting before. It would be nice to have had 15 minutes in that meeting to at least outline the process so that people would know what the four town meeting is about before they get there and that there can be an agreement made um, that um, we do not have everybody speak on behalf of the town but we designate somebody to speak on behalf of the town uh, and uh, that we get some clarity going into the meeting um, but I don't know if we can get that onto the agenda at this point. So I, I have a meeting scheduled with Ms. Pam to go over the agenda items, so I can raise that with her, that's a really good idea. Just to throw my two cents in with what Mr. Steinberg just said, I think back to other um, four town meetings in the past, and I just, I think to kind of figure out a role for the 13 councilors, because it could seem really overwhelming to our um, neighboring towns mm -hmm. that we participated to, to just walk in there and. It's always been open. People have come to listen and learn. So your point, Mr. Bachman, about a learning opportunity is great, but that's different than the role of speaking on behalf of, of one of the boards and sort of, you know, however that's going to go so that it's not overwhelming and maybe even sitting in a different section or something um, so that we don't start off kind of on the wrong foot with that because um, it could be really overwhelming. 
And even though you said, and, I, and you know, there won't be any decision making, there is a uh, kind of past practice of people who are there from those other towns um, asking questions or raising their hand. And so to try to figure out, maybe, maybe work with the uh, regional school committee chair and um, so we how, how that's going to go and maybe, maybe some, some way to ease it in so it doesn't matter. Here comes Amherst with all 13 people like, oh my god. Yeah, just I, I would really appreciate it if you would speak with Ms. Pam about including that on the third's agenda. And and I think that you've heard all of us, and I'm sure you've thought that through as well yourself, wondering, oh wow, how's that going to go? Um, I'll call it weird. I'm sure you wouldn't call it that. But we, I appreciate the mention you made of the fact that this is not one of the meetings where they were planning to have the regional school committee say to the group, okay, Leverett, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Pelham, what do you think? Because this would be super messy for us to have to do that. So I appreciate that they thought that through. And perhaps that could be described at the meeting on the third, that sometimes it's like that. And like you said, the finance committee would be um, under this other form. It's probably the logical choice to make that. But it will be really difficult for some brand new town council members if somebody from Oh, say which town shall we pick on? Mm -hmm. One of the other three towns decides they're in a mood, mm -hmm. and they say something <laughs> oh, about right. the amazing work that's been done on the regional assessment, and our counselors are like, I should probably be doing something, and and wondering if they should be doing something. Mm -hmm. And so for them to feel confidence that they will represent Amherst best by not feeling compelled, <laughs> <by not talking. laughs> that they will serve our Good community luck. best Good luck by not feeling like they have, because they don't know. And, and that's why I appreciate also the idea that there could be an educational session, yeah, particularly yeah. associated with that, because there will be another four boards meeting before the town council's met very many times when mm -hmm. it comes right down to it. And so um, that education will be really important, but people want to feel like they're representing, but representing a lot. Right. I, uh, just to follow up, I agree, I think it would be worthwhile to confirm with uh, Dr. Morris from Mr. Mangano that there's no intent to ask about whether um, our budgets uh, will allow for um, an amount of money to be appropriated as suggested in anything that is presented. Um, I think that usually happens at the second of the um, mm -hmm. four town mm -hmm. meetings, but uh, I don't think it's, I can, couldn't say that it's never happened at the first, and it would be worth confirming that with them and sort of dropping a hint that it puts us in an awkward position, but at least we ought to know, because, uh, you know, there is an answer, depend and it depends upon our initial projections and what the, fi what the current finance committee that's going out of business has put in its guidelines, you know, whether it meets that amount or not. As far as Ms. Brewer's point, uh, at this first town meeting, other towns have come in and made statements, given opinions, um, um, asserted what they think their position is going to be regarding the assessment methodology, and that has always been a very awkward position to be put in, um, and uh, we've been very careful about how to deal with that um, because of my uh, longevity with the issue, having been uh, a member of the Finance Committee back when uh, uh, Ms. Carlozzi was the one who was dealing with this issue principally on out, I, you know, I've frequently been cast in the position of the respondent, but uh, I mean, it's going to be an awkward position unless we have some clarity going in that if that were to happen, whether I or somebody else is designated. Questions or updates relative to the transition for my colleagues there? All right, so let's um, move our agenda to the uh, back to section seven, which is the licenses publicly and metered parking reservations. We have a consent calendar with some license renewals, and we have one metered parking reservation for tomorrow. Um, so, in any particular order, yeah. um, under consent calendar, I think that there were some late additions or changes, so we should review those a little bit. Um, 
But bargaining or wanting to sort of pull out something from the consent calendar. The only two items on the consent calendar that were added was Miss Saigon Corporation and University Liquors. That's on the That's on the renewals. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's a license. That's right. Oops. Okay. The consent calendar had. The consent calendar actually spotted a problem with the consent calendar as it was originally drafted and it was corrected with the revisions. Um, and that was that if you compared the requests that came from the university for one day licenses, it didn't coincide with the list that was originally presented, and that is what the correction does, plus the addition of one additional item onto the consent calendar which is appended to the document so that we do have documentation and it does match. Does someone want to offer a motion relative to the consent calendar? Say, having, having spoken to it already, I will. I'd move to approve the consent calendar as presented on the consent calendar, calendar page attached to the agenda the the amended let me put it call it an amended I think we say revised revised consent calendar page attached to the agenda of the September of the select board meeting dated 11 26 2018 second to a motion to set further discussion hearing none all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. so that's unanimous so then we have our license renewals and you were saying that there are just two that are different from our original list to our new list? There are two, right? Uh, Miss Sagan and University of Liquor, which is Papon Inc. Okay, I move to approve the renewal of annual licenses for the calendar year 2019 as listed in the revised annual license renewal table part 70, the additional page of the select board agenda of 11 26 2018. Second. Yes, so I have a question that I am confident staff has an answer to which is um, Amherst Inn and the Lord Jeffrey Inn. So are we renewing their DBA as their new DBA, their old DBA? Are we going to have to do something else with them? Mm -hmm. Well, obviously we're not going to because you know, unless we'll you do it on Saturday. But I just wondered if this was one of those things where you have to just keep going with the paperwork you've got. For the common VIC, we can do the DBA. For the ABCC stuff, it has to come back from the state before we can change the name. Right. Okay. I knew you were on it, so okay. I'm not worried about it. Okay. Just, yes, I, just, um, I, I don't have a problem with this, but I'm just curious. I know that the staff worked really hard to kind of get these rounded up in, in and I'm wondering if there's any, like how, how many didn't come in that we still, still are ha hounding? I believe we are all set for alcohol. Okay, so we got them all. I think we might have some lingering convicts. Convicts. Okay. And that's in no small measure to the work that mm -hmm. yes. Ms. Weiss and Ms. Bell's put into calling that and Con, yeah. reminding yes. people yeah. regularly. Constantly. It wasn't just responding to the first email. No, no, no. How, they really were, how they were making people. phone calls. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you. Absolutely. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh, so that's unanimous as well. And so, uh, yes. Sure. Sure. So, I love derailing the train of thought, Mr. Slaughter. That's I'm quite, sorry. Yeah. Um, so, are we going to talk about the committee appointments and vacancies going back? Is that sort of fitting under charter transition? Because we don't have to do it now, but I'm saying we're going to do it yeah. at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm fine Absolutely. with not doing it yet. No, <laughs> That's just fine. Because it's not called out. 
yeah, it's, yeah. it's it would technically be the topics for future I think council it's consideration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we go back. <clears throat> I thought Which we'll come back to because it's a seven. Yeah, let's finish seven. Right. So Parking. we got a request. It's for tomorrow for a couple of spots. Um, I think the one question I have, the, the time that's requested is 3 to 9 p.m., so it's really only 3 to 6 p.m. would be the sort of meterable hours. Um, would we be charging them for those three hours, for those two spots? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we charge we'll, them for sure. Because we'll it's usually mm -hmm. $10 a day or, mm -hmm. you know, That's right. or is it? A day, so this is $10 a day, so I would just say, because they get the privilege of being reserving that. So we probably should have that in the motion? Yes. For those yeah. of you. Can I have a question? Sure. Don't interrupt. So I just read the request, and um, it looks to me like is this going to be overnight parking and it's only till nine because that's when the ticketing ends? Or is this a mobile? It says suite, traveling suite. Is that like a, like an RV kind of thing? Um, because I don't really understand. If we're providing, we're allowing the most worshipful one to have an RV, or what is I, it? I, What's the traveling suite? I, I interpreted suite? suite to mean an entourage. It might be more than one vehicle. It's not. Um, not, not an RV. It's, it's not an overnight place they're staying because I would have a problem with that. Uh, I don't really care what they do 15 years ago. But not, yeah. I, I care. <laughs> but, okay. but uh, maybe, maybe if my, yeah. Ms. Mills might be able to explain what, what it is. I think traffic. it's more than one vehicle. For overnight or just, no, just for that? Just during time. the time of the performance. So basically, it gets them free parking. Like, why do they have to I think it? there's an accessibility issue, perhaps. Mm. In, in what regard? Just proximity to the building. Because they have to carry equipment, or they have to... I think there's some of that, but I also think there might be age involved. So, I'm having trouble understanding the need for this light's different than anybody else who is older and has to park and get to something, or are they just because it's their lodge, they want I think they feel they have a very honored guest who's who's a, who's, a, who's attending. They'd like to have reserved parking right in front of their building, but they can say we've reserved this parking for you, and it makes it easier for the most worshipful okay. one to get into the building. So I guess with the amendment, it's just as good as having a dumpster for ten dollars a day. So. Yep. Sure. So someone want to make the motion? I do think we should include the. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Per space, per day. Jimmy. Per, well, it's only one day. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, Jimmy Berghoff, president of the Pacific Lodge Building Association. Second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. That's unanimous. So now we'll cycle back to uh, the memo that is technically for me, but largely crafted by Mr. Bachman on my behalf. Thank you very much for that, by the way. In our packet, there's a report of eight pages in length, dated 11-21-2018, which has asterisks, asterisks on people's last name. Uh, I can guarantee that that has been changed to be on the date as opposed to on the name, and therefore if people 
are in more than one place and have different dates, it only shows up where it's supposed to. So I do know that that will change relative to that report. It's not in our printed copy right here because we we'll just got one on our desk. Did we do one on our desk? Yes, okay, so there's a new one tonight. We should, it's beautiful. So it should have the we had the technical expertise come in this morning to fix for the, <laughs> the programming that was necessary to make that allowed. Uh, right. well, I was wondering about that expertise. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, so um, did you want to introduce the middle at all? Uh, under, under the charter, the uh, select board is required to provide a list of vacancies in the town boards, uh, and this would accomplish that task. Um, and we also made one other change, which is, I'm not, I don't know if we copied these or not, but on the committee charges, uh, we adjusted, we took off the special municipal employee designation um, and changed the historical, um, historical commission, something that we changed? Um, it was the local historic local district historic committee. Local historic district committee yeah. went to commission. So in, on, your, in, on your desk is a new memo that has we have a very busy yellow page. So what we got in our yellow folder was not the track changes version. We, we got the new version from that looked so Mr. Slaughter's version before I wrote all over it looked like this. Mm -hmm. And then tonight, as of like 615, Ms. Bells was racing around printing this. One level draft, right? Right. Yeah. This yes, that says will be on select board right. letterhead. This yeah. is yes. this is one. largely a longer version <laughs> of what the previous one was because I tried to take into account, I probably thought of one additional thing, but I tried to take into account our relatively lengthy discussion last time we discussed this because um, Mr. Bachman had given us a memo dated November 9th back at our meeting on the 13th that described all the things he just said about what we're doing and we've made some fixes to the database so we can track things appropriately. and. We've made some fixes to the vacancy list, I'm assuming, because the data once the database gets updated, then the vacancy list is corrected because there were some errors in that too, which happens with a weird database over time. And so what I asked to have added to our packet tonight, whereas Mr. Slaughter had asked for that, just that nice clean back and forth, um, and that was what was in our packet that was delivered. What I added was, thanks to Ms. Mills, I added the one that says draft will be in select board letterhead. Mr. Slaughter has a copy <coughs> of the track changes version. And then I also asked for this, which staff also had to repair, which was an old memo dated May 24, 2016, which talks at some length about how our process actually works, which seems incredibly useful because now having spoken with several future council members who have absolutely zero idea as to how the appointment process works, I thought giving them some additional context for how it worked would help make some of that. Just thoughts that we were sharing with them make more sense, but given that there is now more than twice as much information on these pieces of paper than there was before, I wonder if we might take a brief recess, because it's, it's time for recess. Anyway, yeah, and then maybe people, people read could read it, and then we could see how close it is to, you now have the electronic version and you being able to just make it so. Yes. <laughs> Be done with it. Oh, it will not be that simple. No, no she'll no, find sure. 50 things to with it. So. so why don't we take a brief recess for reading and let everybody get a chance to read through the, the edited memo. Yeah. All right. So I think we'll call ourselves back to order since I think everyone's had an opportunity to, to read through the, the particulars. Um, and so 
are there comments, suggestions, edits? So one typo that I wanted to mention. Just one. Well, pretty quickly. Working groups instead of working group. We've got task forces. I think it's just an S on groups. Yes. Well, what I would like to do at this point is I would like to uh, happily argue over any of the typos I made, but I would like to no longer have responsibility for this. <laughs> no, and no, that's so fine. I, I'm not going to make the notes as being something I'm going to fix. No, and no. So um, I'm hoping that between you and Mr. Bachelman yeah, and Ms. Mills, you will take care of, of yes. the things that arise as they arise. Yes. It is a memo from me, so. Right. <laughs> I'm just remembering because I thought we were going to get this to look at like electronically from you. Um, when it came in my printed packet, when I read your draft, I was like, what do I do with this now? So I didn't put any time into it, but I knew it needed work. So right. well, am I just remembering? The, the no, I think we had hoped to get it to everyone a little earlier than we did. So, so I'm at a junction where do we want to sit here and slog through all the changes, or do we want to have another process that we could then somehow get something and act on it on the first since we can meet anyway? There's a lot. I'm open to through. suggestion. So it's, it's sort of a question mark. Then. I'm curious what the other members think about that. Um, numbers and kinds of edits. If they want to send them to me, I can merge those together. Yes. I suppose what what I would what I would hope we could find a way to do, although one person's typo is another person's beautifully worded, <laughs> no. you know, no. poetry. I suppose, but. Rather, like those could just be forwarded to you, whether sure. it's by handing you a hard copy or whatever right. um, to do, rather than trying to merge several track changes. But I wonder if, the, if people have substantive mm -hmm. things that they mm -hmm. want to say, no, this shouldn't have been in mm -hmm. here, or yes, this actually makes me think of this other thing that should have been in right. here, and we can deal with that. Because what I prefer to do, beyond me already saying, I don't want to do it anymore, is that you would just publish it. I don't think we need to look at it again on the first, personally. I would just assume you did it, but maybe if somebody's volunteered to help you with it, that is okay. Um, that's awesome, too. Would we have it electronically in our electronic packet, or is that a PDF? That's probably a PDF. Is we can get the useless? electronic one out. Yeah. Um, I'll probably, I'll well, you can get this electronic one that literally right. only got sent to people, a couple people today at 610. So that could well, be that's forwarded. the one that I yeah. didn't get. Well, if I did. no one got it. No, no, I, I'm, right. not, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. If I'm going to do typos, right. I, I need, I'd rather do it in track changes. Sure. So I'd rather have it electronically. But I could quickly go over the things of substance if that's what Ms. Brewer wants us to focus on. I just have to double that. Okay. <coughs> yeah. And then that way we could maybe argue about the substantive but things. But I don't, have to, go, to I don't have to go first. Um, Why don't you? <laughs> well, having invested many hours in this you know, appointment process, and thank you for bringing out the 2016 memo. But um, one, on the, okay, so some, some things are just some grammatical things at the beginning, but um, second paragraph, it says, to engage new people in town government. And do we, do we mean just, what do we mean by new people? I mean, do we mean a wide range of people with, with different backgrounds, or to engage a variety of people, um, promote fairness and engage new people. So it's okay, but I just feel like new is Perhaps more. Like as if new were, had more value. Than additional. Right. Yeah, additional, maybe. Um, I mean, like one sentence I didn't change. <laughs> so it was beautiful. Um, right. um, and then we, the, the third paragraph where it says continue the electronic citizen activity form process. In the process, but I, we hated that form and we weren't able to change it because we didn't have a database that allowed us to modify it and carries a lot of stuff that um, I wasn't really happy with, um, including the thing about diversity of membership and we have a difference of opinion, I think. There's some questions there that I thought were inappropriate. So I might suggest more that we, we used it, but it, it bears a kind of re-examination reconsideration rather than say, oh, we love the CAF, keep using it, because I don't think that's, because the CAF was carefully constructed to collect demographic data that would help us improve diversity of membership, 
that may have been true, but it, there were a bunch of things that I thought were, I just like some new eyes looking at it again, rather than saying, oh, we love the CAF, because I don't. Um, so that was one of the other one. Um, yeah. Could we talk about that for a minute? Okay. Oh, yeah. Sure. If you want. Yeah. So I'm <coughs> fine with adding something that makes it clear that it's far from perfect. It's just that it's a thing that we have now that can continue to be used. And if we tell them it's so horrible that they need to throw it away, then <laughs> just think be. how lovely that'll be to try and figure things out. It was suggested to me by one person that maybe we just sent all the names of interested parties to the town manager and then he'd deal with the list. And I, I thought that was a really interesting approach, but... Um, well, to temper this something. Yeah, if you want to temper it with something that says, it wasn't a great process, but it's pretty good. Um, I think you can that's... use review and revision or something. Right. But I, I, and I think Mr. Slaughter tried to get at that, perhaps, in working with Mr. Bachelman before, saying, eh, it's a good process. Eh, right, there was a general good. caveat there yeah. about, okay, so something, and then... Did, did Mr. Walken say, did you have something about that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just to, I mean, maybe just reading this differently, I, I, don't, I think this is a bureaucratic document, not a love letter, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, whether it says new or additional, I'm All not right. going to I'm going to die on. And the same thing with the CAF. I thought it was in the spirit that Mr. Slaughter and the town manager and Brewer were trying to achieve here, which is to say, we have a process that works, but obviously every process needs to be refined, and we hope that the town council makes it its own, too. So, All right. I, I mean, I, I can live with that. I just, um, something that reflects that there's, you know, some room for improvements. Yeah, I mean, I guess part of the question would be, like, do we like a standardized form? Because, I mean, I thought that the, it, it helps tracking changes over time too. You know, when you change the form, it makes it hard to track. So I don't know exactly what change you'd be right. suggesting, well, but and we're not going to do that now because it's not. I mean, right? Because we didn't do it two years we, ago. We, 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 just 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 <laughs> and then just, I'll just kind um, of two of five select board members took on the management of regularly filling select board appointed. I wonder if it's regularly recommending people to fill because it sounds like the two people were making the appointment. Filling. And then bring the appointments forward. In the fourth paragraph of the beginning. If it goes up, uh, bring the appointments forward. Subject to the new one. Uh, it says management, not, they're not actually filling it okay. themselves. Okay, all right, I'll let that one go. I mean, just, no, we didn't have a chance to, you know, just doing this yes. on the fly. Yes, we're having okay. to do it on the fly. Then the other thing was um, the, the last sentence of that fourth paragraph. These brief private interviews have been a useful but time-consuming process, given scheduling logistics among staff and part-time volunteers. And I might say um, that the select board has changed the practice to allow phone or one-on-one -on -one interviews in some instances because we actually change the everyone shall be interviewed mm -hmm. thing I and, abbre and we abbreviated it. We, did, we talked about that. In the Meeting and I don't know how many times we implement, but it's like in this case it might be the manager or it was the chair or the, the liaison could just meet with that person. Um, depends on what the committee is and how known that person, whatever it was. So I just wanted to mention that we, we actually, because of the logistical yeah. burden, we kind of created so like a that should be added on. Unless someone remembers that differently. No, no, I, I agree. I guess I would have. I mean, I was wondering whether we have to talk about. This, you know, far be it for me to lengthen this document. Um, you know, the reason we did it because the temporary town manager felt he needed more guidance in this thing. And then when the current town manager came in, we decided it was a useful process. And then having done this for everyone, we decided we'd apply it more selectively. Right. So let me not the whole yeah. history, but maybe we can say that we decided to apply it selectively or at someone's right. discretion rather right. than in every case. Right. So I think we should, because we did change I think it. that would be, that would be really That's good fine. to add that there because I think it is important to tell them, like, how we got to this point so that, right? right. And then they can do it right. however they want. And they're doing a lot fewer, just, right? It's going to be right. a very different process. Another sentence. But at least they know how people we got uh, there. I'm, I'm gonna try to so really you can add that maybe. Right. And then um, the last paragraph on page one, it says, while providing for, uh, the, it talks about the six year thing, and it says, while providing for continued membership. For extenuating circumstances. I was just wondering if we should give an example of what an extenuating mm -hmm. circumstance might be, not having thought of one yet. Um, uh, 
most of the rest of oh just when we give the list on page three of all the committees this, this is going to some newer participants maybe we should write out what those committees are and it was six and five. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're showing way too much ownership with this document. Please do no, that. I think yeah. that's a great, I think no, that showing the acronyms is important because uh, people use them all the oh, time. Oh, I think it would be a great right, idea to write it, write it out. Um, and then, yeah. uh, uh, whatever. You're showing too much ownership. Right there. Um, on C, all committee charges. Just um, where in the second paragraph it says dormant committees not found in this material may not have been official. Uh, should it just be other committees not found in this material? Like you knew of one, but you're not seeing it here? Is it, I'm just not sure. It's dormant. It, it's dormant, but it's not on the list. I, not a big deal. It's a question mark on dormant, and that's all I got. The reason I put that there is because most of the ones that follow in this example, in this list, are listed on the current committee and board page as though they're real things. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, well, if somebody turns in a thing for uh, Kendrick Park Design Advisory Committee or something. Get well, <laughs> but it's just not found in this material. So those well, are th that's, in this material. No, they're not in this material. They're not in this material. They're not on here. Then what do you mean they're on the list? What do you mean? Dormant those? committees not found in this material. So there are committees that are listed on the town website, which is oh. not being provided to them. This is being provided it's to them, and it's fine. not in it, here. I just think it's and there's no charge for it. I think it's confusing, but that's... Maybe you can think of another way to phrase it. The attachment to the rest. Did you have any other? No, no. Okay. Just the if I could just pick up something that Ms. Kruger mentioned in the past over with that further comment, I don't know if it's worth it, at the bottom of page one, the last paragraph, about this, uh, since she and I worked on appointments at that time, mm -hmm. you know, reducing, uh, limiting service normally to six years, I guess I might add here that it was wrong the informal custom that you served two terms. You know, it's not something we made it up ourselves, or we decided to. Right, we enforced uh, the custom. For, we decided to formalize the, the, yeah. the practice, yeah. you know. Right, of what had uh, enforced the previous understanding of it that had not always. Yes. Right. Something like, I think that's. So correct. it has a certain weight behind it. It's not just yeah. the town yeah. council should overturn yeah. lightly. And I don't know if you have examples, Mr. Steinberg used to give examples, I believe, all the time. We were on this at the Kanagasaki Committee, you know, someone for of Japanese language and culture, mm -hmm. or in Water Commission, you might do the special or things like that. Right. So. Maybe that's the extenuating example, example yeah. you want right. to have. Yeah. I mean, those were examples that came those. up frequently in conversation. Yeah, you can just say IE and then. I think that's I can't edit this anymore. I can't Not see you. Doug's doing this. He's taking down the substantive, and I'm, I'm only doing typos. Yeah, it's all town manager now, so yeah. he knows what he's doing. I mean, we say our advisory committee. Yeah. Yeah. We say, right. So this gets sent to them with your direction, and then they figure out what they want to do next. Mm -hmm. But at least people will know how we got the people we have. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, to get back to a point that was previously discussed, I was looking on my iPad quickly. I mean, we seem to have glossed over the fact that uh, Connie and I sent a memo on February 8th of this year in which we made some significant recommendations of changes to the interview process and named certain committees that we thought did not warrant uh, Full interviews of everybody all of the time, and um, I think that uh, um, we called for a streamlined interview process for a number of committees, which could be one per person and either the manager or the board, depending upon who is the appointing authority, um, including possibilities of phone interviews for the uh, mm -hmm. committees that merited that. Okay. So um, we so really ought to that. take mm -hmm. that February 8th memo yeah, and consider recent. appending mm -hmm. it to yeah. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still yeah. think it's important to include the one from May 2016 as well, because it does details, but I think that's really a great mm -hmm. yeah. companion piece. Yeah. Because yeah. It, it goes, right. it's another piece that's really important. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being the memory that I And um, totally in that, that, at that same time was where we had the, uh, I think 
No, maybe it was, it was later, but um, the recommendation that we made about, I guess it was later, about the, <laughs> excuse me, uh, appointments that were expiring um, mm -hmm. this year on June 30th, we used the word reappointed too. So that a correct statement in that sentence, which is um, on the second Instead page, of extend. in the, the mm -hmm. you know, um, under A, in about the fifth or sixth paragraph, one that begins, you will note that uh, even beyond the date, until they're replaced, reappointed, or they resign, we didn't mm -hmm. get the reappointed or. Oh, that's one of the other. Choices. Yes. Yeah, for so that it didn't, it wasn't sent out as a signal that the manager could know. not re ah. propose mm -hmm. reappointment. We, we didn't, uh, that, so that should be added. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the very That's next that. paragraph, this is a real simple one, uh, I would put, for example, EG before AA. HTF, oh, as you did in the next one, for, for example, is yep. down there. Yep, 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 there's just one. It's all right. So I would suggest, I'll take these under consideration, but if, if people, upon further reflection, uh, see something else that they want to mention. I do think that in that, just that's fine, them. absolutely. And take them and leave them on the edit note. Um, but we'll definitely include the, I think that memo from the 8th of February will include right. in that mm -hmm. cluster of things that are attached to this. Yeah, it um, should be the second. And we'll first, reference that appropriately the in, in the document mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. Good, good work. So okay. we'll cobble that together and, and share back out. Um, and just you know, have you guys give it one last read through yeah. before we? Oh no, we don't want to read it again. Well, no, you, have I, you don't have to. If you don't offer comment, then it's <laughs> no, it's fine time. as is. I just handed it to you. Okay. Be before Whatever. Saturday? No, you're good. Really? These <laughs> guys think of something. You know. What are you doing between us? Yes. So, would you want this before the council at their first meeting on December third as an agenda item, or just as mm -hmm. a transfer or transmittal from the mm -hmm. select board? Mm -hmm. If it's ready by the end of time to fill in your packets this week, or the, or the, we could we could physically hand it to them on that night. Be so, so I was thinking you were going to come in and like put it on a little pillow, or <laughs> <laughs> a little a presentation. Satin one, perhaps. <laughs> I don't think sending it ahead fair. is a good idea no. unless you're planning to answer a whole ton of questions. So maybe just distributing it. At. It's a lot. Of yeah, and, and, it, and it does need to be paper as well as you know, electronic, right. I think. And then maybe once the president is picked or elected, then they can decide if mm -hmm. they want it as a separate agenda item to have right. the former chair yeah. or somebody to come right. and talk about it. Right. What a good idea. Yeah. I, and then you can bring the public. And I think a, little, yeah. a little bit of context yeah. is we wanted to do this on a lot of topics, and this is the only one we really got right. to. It's the only one required by the Oh, yes, that's right. why. <laughs> <laughs> we right. have required parts done. I have a personal conflict in saying this, but uh, I would hate to see the first uh, meeting go till midnight or 1 a.m. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, and, don't open uh, it. That's why I said just hand it before yeah. they leave. Don't open the So I think arms. we need to be <laughs> somewhat cautious. Right, starting yeah, at I Here's the thing you can read in all your spare time before the next meeting that you See already it? set up. And then they can crumple it up. After all, it'll be well past Mr. Mears' box deadline. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> true that. That's true. Okay, so we don't have to do this on Saturday. Right. No, we, are, we don't have to do this again. So, um, so did you want to do want to do the same remember report? <clears throat> No, I'm going to let Mr. Sanger do that because he did the vast majority of the work. That would be great. <coughs> so, although this is technically not under, this would probably it's fall under report. member reports. That is the um, the letter to the Massachusetts Board of Elementary and Secondary Education. We want to take that up at this point. I think we should. Mm -hmm. um, we may sort of cycle back on on other member reports, but I did want to have yeah. us have a substantive conversation about this, and I I will. 
uh, as usual, um, state that I tend to fall into conflict on topics like this because it's related to school, and so I will um, reveal my chair to Ms. Kruger officially. Yes, the vice chair. It's oh, your vice chair. Then, just, then, I, got then I, should, item. I should actually find it. I, have, I, I know I had it, but we just got it tonight. Right. right. Okay. Okay. So no. I hope if okay, you want to ask Mr. Steinberg to introduce it. Yes. Um, yeah. As, as, yes, as you will recall, I'm sure on October 15th of this year, um, this board voted to submit a letter um, to the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education um, requesting that they um, again uh, deny the request of the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School for a revision of its charter to enlarge the number of slots. And the designation was that um, Ms. Brewer, with my assistance, would um, draft the letter and were empowered to, um, to send the letter on behalf of the board. At that time, I think we thought that the deadline was the beginning of November, so we were under some pressure. It was then extended until December 3rd, so a letter, in fact, has not been sent as of yet. But we have drafted the letter, put it in what we believe is final form, have sent it for comment to um, you know, people um, for uh, review, and uh, have come back uh, and done some final editing. and. This is the letter now as we propose to send it. It is ready for me to sign as clerk on behalf of the board since uh, the president can't sign and we mm -hmm. really designate who would do it. So we figured it was just mm -hmm. as well to have it be as state as, as mm -hmm. it is worded now. Mm -hmm. uh, and to, uh, um, so we are prepared to do it, but we do have time that we didn't anticipate when we did that on yeah. October 15th actually receive comments from you because it could be revised if there are minor revisions and still get it in the mail and in the hands of uh, the board by the deadline. I was, um, Ms. Brewer, I'm sorry, I was under the impression it already got emailed today. I didn't think we were. Was this in I thought it already was sent for the very reasons we talked about before. So I was confused. No, it, what, what happened was it was put into final form with the intent that I was going to sign it tonight if, and then um, it was going to be mailed in hard copy tomorrow and emailed. Um, it could be emailed also. Um, but uh, we wanted to um, have the formality of a hard copy. And so it has in fact not been sent and was it, since I didn't get a chance to sign it yet. But, but just a quick question to you. I, I don't have a problem with the letter, well, it's great, but just where it says copies of the town meeting resolution and our correspondence, which it refers to previous correspondence of this board, are appended to this letter. If you're going to email this, would you append or just up, or would it just be appended in hard copy? Because um, you might want to make that reference. Email. I mean, I don't know what your intention because there's three other documents that go with this. Yes, and um, Which we have I don't think that it's a problem to, to append the documents um, because we actually have them in okay. electronic so format. Just to, to, that would maybe be important for someone who receives it who isn't going to go find the hard copy. Anyway, that's yes. all. Um, no, they, it can be appended to both. Okay, great. Versions. And it keeps it all together. Yeah. Does anyone else have any comments? Uh, and I don't believe we need a motion because we already voted this on October 15th. So we're just, as a courtesy, you're showing it to us. Anything else from any members? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Steinberg. Yes, thank you for taking on this drawer. And put that to rest, and I'd like to turn the gavel. <laughs> virtual remedies, back to Thank you. So, um, if I'm reading my agenda correctly, I believe that we are 
to the town manager's report if you would like to uh, take us through that a little bit. Um, <coughs> Mr. Chair, uh, a small good news, we got received a Massachusetts Cultural Council grant for $5,000 for our uh, cultural district, Amherst Cultural District, Amherst Center Cultural District. Um, this is to fund brochures, uh, networking events, temporary staff uh, for the cultural district. Uh, on the bad news side, is we did not receive a MassWorks grant. We received a letter in the mail today oh. notifying us that we did not receive the MassWorks grant. That's not a surprise to us in that all the MassWorks grants were announced immediately prior to the state election, and we were not invited to any of the announcements. So. That's how you know. Mm -hmm. Um, the uh, a, a letter is going out. We had the first snowstorm uh, a couple weeks ago, where we declared a snow emergency. I think it was, and um, we did not ticket and tow cars, but we are uh, because of the snowfall, um, and we wanted people to be educated. So we are, are educating people by putting. We've recorded where all those cars were on the street where they should not have been, and we're leafleting all the cars uh, during the next couple weeks so that they have adequate notice that if they're parked on the street during a snow emergency, a snow emergency, they will be ticketed and they will be towed. We've also sent out letters um, to people where we've noticed that when they plowed their driveways or um, uh, were removing snow from their property, it was being put back into the street, and that's a, a violation of one of our bylaws. And so we put notification, advance warnings to people that if they continue that practice of putting snow in the street or if they're plow, it's typically not the individuals, it's the plow companies that they, they've hired, the private plowers, and they, they, and they may the, and they may not even, the homeowner may not even realize it's being done. Uh, but to let them know that they're responsible to make sure that they don't put snow back into the street once our, our plows have gone through the streets to clear the roads. And that's frustrating to people because sometimes it plows in their driveway so they get anger, angry, uh, but the solution isn't to put it back in the road um, because and it's, what is the solution? is to move it to the side of the driveway as opposed to putting it back in the road because then we come back and we put, start putting it back in your the driveway. So it's a, I think the, the solution is we have bigger plows maybe, I don't know. Um, that. Hopefully that people will help solve the situation by not making the road, the, the travel lane of the road more dangerous by putting snow uh, in there. We, we, we spent a lot of time and effort to clear the roads and we try to keep them that way. Um, I do have a suggestion yes. for May. Uh, yeah. On cul-de-sacs, <laughs> yeah. uh, if they do not have a curb on the inside, yeah. they can push the snow to the inside and the outside. Yeah. Um, because I live on a cul-de-sac. They push snow down the street into the into the circle in the center of the cul-de-sac, and then proceed to push the snow to the edge, yeah. the outside edge, which puts it in everyone's driveway. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I know it's a, you know, they're trying to get as much done as quickly as they can, and it's a reversal of the normal operation for them. So, it shouldn't be a hard solution. Right? But yeah, you know, I know that there are times that mm -hmm. they can't help it. It's a straight street. Yeah. It's just going to end up in someone's driveway. But right. other times, it sort of unloads more of the plow onto the end of someone's driveway when it's on a circle. Right. Yes. I like this almost as good as parking. <laughs> right. It's <laughs> right next to it. It's right next to it. It's only part of the so, year. So while we're on that topic, one of the things that I I just hope that somebody has a conversation about someday is we have a tradition here of blocking numerous downtown parking spaces with piles of snow for weeks at a time, uh, depending on the time of year, sometimes days. And it's really frustrating when we say we don't have parking and then snow's piled up in those parking spaces. So I wonder if we, maybe if there's a philosophy behind, and then it usually gets removed within 72 hours. I mean, I realize that when they're having to really be out on the roads all night, of course, I mean, there's human limitations as to how much we can make people work but sometimes many days go by while the spaces are still blocked and people get very frustrated by that. So maybe if um, we could just be able to explain to people what the philosophy is right. at some point in the future, like you can expect that that will be cleared out within three days and if it isn't, please put it on C-Click Fix or something like that. <coughs> so the goal is to remove snow from downtown, especially um, from all, the, all the, the, the main streets through downtown and the parking lots. 
uh, occasionally what happens is that, and I've, I've had these conversations with DPW, is that um, they try to schedule the overtime because um, they typically do this at a lot of it at night or early in the morning uh, so that if they've been plowing all night or during the course of the day, they have to give them a certain amount of time to recover. So it seems like it's been days when it's actually been, they're coming, it might be two days because they might have plowed all night long, it's there. Uh, they can't come in the next night because they're, they've been working all, day, all night. So it might seem like days. Um, and then sometimes some other things pop up. And so if I know that it's a, a priority for them to remove snow from downtown, uh, they're, they're used to doing it. Um, and uh, so I just think they, they attempt to do it. And if, if they are, there's usually a legitimate reason because I've had multiple conversations about this as well with DPW. Um, uh, another topic that has come to the fore is the Station Road Bridge. And um, we continue to work on that. We're looking at, uh, we'll be updating the website with an updated FAQ because people have been asking additional questions which we're attempting to uh, answer. Um, and some of the questions are very logical to the, the normal, to, to the average layperson, and that makes total sense. And uh, for instance, one of the questions is, why can't you just, um, put in a temporary bridge that's three feet taller, which is what we've seen, and, and just have people slowly climb up over the bridge, and that's engineering-wise not permitted. And so when you have to make a three-foot, say, climb, you have to have a pretty fairly long um, run-up to, to climb over it. But And then at that last three-foot section, you have to have a fairly wide base to accommodate vehicles going over it. Uh, we're trying to keep within the, the right of way of the road without extending uh, into either property that the town does not own, so we have to do a taking, even a temporary taking, or that it extends into wetlands. So there are a lot of complications um, when you start looking at what seem to be logical solutions. Uh, the engineers are really diligently looking at this. Um, Mass DOT has been cooperative. Uh, with us, they know they're well aware of where we are in the process. Uh, we've been we did borings today to determine the uh, the um, the strength of the uh, footings. Basically, I forget the official name of that's holding the bridge up now, and they're finding all kinds of things as they start to explore the territory there. Um, but. The key is that we have to put, if we're going to, if the town is going to invest money into anything that's going to cross that, that, that span, we have to make sure that an engineer is willing to put their, their stamp on it, and uh, engineers won't put on a stamp on something that isn't safe. And so that's, that's a really key ingredient. Uh, Mass Highway does not require us to get any approval from them for a temporary bridge. But they do, we do still have to go through a permitting process for wetlands for, all, for a lot of the other species, you know, different environmental issues that we will face, face even if it is a temporary bridge, just like any other project. If, even if it's temporary, you have to address environmental issues. Um, so we're, we will continue to work on answering questions for people as best we can and um, sharing that out through the website and other means as best we can. Uh, and then the last thing I have for you is that we received a, a letter from Berkshire Gas today indicating that um, we are on their waiting list and since there is no relief from the moratorium coming, uh, they uh, were required by the State Department of Public Utilities to have a public interest benefit grant program um, <laughs> to encourage uh, public entities and nonprofit organizations to utilize alternate heating technologies. So. That's something we will want to be looking at to take, to take advantage of for any projects that we may have. I've shared that out with the town officials to see if, if we have anything that um, that can apply. I think the deadline is May of 2019, so we have time to sort of work through What's this. The cap? I don't. I didn't really read it that closely. I can send it out to everybody. Mm -hmm.
should definitely be thinking of a much smoother way to say this, but I'm not going to. I'm just giving you the heads up. Yeah. So you, we have a beautiful seven-page updated town manager's yep. report that has so much information and has also has personnel changes in, that I don't think I was particularly aware of. So thank you for, for letting us know about those. Um, I don't believe the Mass Works grant or the Station Road Bridge appear in this memo, although I haven't had time to do a search in your place. So and that, so what I'm just yeah. saying is mm -hmm. it would be great as a category at a category mm -hmm. for you know because you have so many great yeah. project yeah. updates yeah. like Pepper's time right. and stuff yeah. to just yeah. have it there yeah. to show that Absolutely. it's always there. That's right. I wish it was on there, but I'm not sure mm -hmm. it's got as much up-to-date information. I've got to figure it's in there somewhere. <laughs> 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 it is in there, but the email's really detailed. It looks probably good. It it's it's a terrific document to be able to look to when you're looking mm -hmm. something, particularly when you look at it electronically. It's going to be searched for short easily. Short long term solution to the station and bridge closure. Where's that? Right there, page four. Under DPW. Under DPW. Yeah. But it's literally just a one sentence. Maybe move it under projects mm -hmm. so it gets some more attention. Oh, yeah. Project yeah. updates. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other Thank questions? You. Uh, Mr. Sender. Yeah, I did two things. One is uh, something you directly spoke to, and that is um, snow emergency. Um, I did actually, we do have uh, three houses in my immediate neighborhood that are um, student rentals, and um, all very nice students that I get along with very well. And I mentioned the snow emergency to residents one of the houses, and uh, I told this individual to relate it to his housemates that when a snow emergency comes so that they can make a request that when that happens, we would send a text message or email, which was the policy originally, and I hope is, yes. but I would urge to remind because um, knowing these uh, <laughs> people, uh, that's what's going to grab their attention. They're not going to see blue lights as easily. And, but then they, very, we're very eager to comply. Um, they were pleased to know about the policy from me and not get a ticket first. <laughs> uh, and uh, the other thing, just as a reminder of a totally different subject, is when we did the renewal of the contract between us and um, Amherst Media to be the tech provider, there was a reopener that we negotiated that said that if the town changed its form of government that we would reopen the contract for the purpose of changing the designation of meetings that would be covered by the um, Amherst Media and we probably have to exercise that reopener. Excellent. Right. Yeah. Any other questions or comments from the manager? So now we're on to select board member reports. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I think we discussed last week, uh, each was taking a moment to sort of, uh, since it is our last in front of the camera sort of meeting, um, to sort of you know, offer a comment about our time on the board and, and that sort of thing. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to remind you that we're going to do that and so that you can We've thought about that a little bit, but also um, the other topic I wanted to bring up tonight was that of minutes. And so um, I think what's likely to be the case, because we don't have any in front of us this evening, but we might have some for Saturday, the first, uh, but we also may have a motion that allows uh, us to sort of delegate the authority to approve any other minutes. Um, so I just want to give you a heads up that that's probably in the works. But we haven't got the formal language just with us tonight, I don't think. Is it just came? Let's make it up. Well, there, there's, uh, well, there's some specific things. There were some things that council, town council had suggested in, in the motion, but there were, and then I, in reading that, also thought there were like one other thing or two that I would like to add to that. So I think we might want to be more comprehensive. Than yeah, just minutes. be careful a little bit because it has to do with executive session minutes and not and our existing minutes mm -hmm. and not. So I just. To get it right. We want to get it right because okay. we really get one shot at this, which will be Saturday. <laughs> exactly. so we I just have a logistical question. Yes. So um, I had gotten an email with attachments asking me to look at minutes, which I then 
to guess and forgot about. And I marked up two sets of that eight and and I did it in a hard copy. So who do I give this? How do I get those changes made? Um, because I I've, I've done two and intend to do the other ones. Um, so just the, what's the mechanics of this? It's a preference. Um, I think uh, maybe after the meeting or uh, tomorrow you should check with Ms. Mills as to what was useful to her. What I've been doing is a different process because I've been doing the track changes on a Word document, but that's an extra step. Yeah, and I and didn't it does either. take time. Uh, and uh, but something has to get in, yeah. So if you, if, you give, if you give them to me, we'll take care of the change. Or you're doing handwritten changes, I yeah. yeah, we can incorporate those easily enough. And any minutes that we have ready by Wednesday that we can send out in advance of the Saturday meeting, we will. Anything that's you know beyond that that's not ready, then we just won't send out. And we'll ask for we'll, we'll have a draft motion that the chair will be asking us about okay. to delegate. Yeah. So yeah. I'd love to take those right okay, now. Okay, and I'll just say, if you can't read, you know, think what was what I meant, just let me yeah. know. And um, the only reason I underlined the date at the top was just to remind me with what I was working on. But the other stuff, yeah, like okay, like um, the the Mullen and Gray Mullen are two two different people. So the E and what's an I in right? Yes, and it's we usually simple. say not related. So it just just little stuff. Yeah, yeah. Nothing of substance. They were all like commas and stuff. Just clean up work. Nothing. Good. Nothing that was misquoted. Thank you. Just two. Just two. So, at this point, I think we can go into our select board member reports. Okay. And so, if <laughs> anyone would like to offer their comments about uh, any actual reports, like we usually do, or any additional comments that anyone would like to make. That I think we did the reflection thing at agenda setting. So we're willing to participants in this. So I'm not reflecting at this point. We did hear it in an email, and so we hear it in an email, so obviously we can do that. But um, what I wanted to do was just a member report associated with something that I've now completely forgotten, but I will say <laughs> associated with that. Um, that Mr. Bachman very kindly drove us up to a meeting about Western Massachusetts Network 10 homelessness. Pam mm -hmm. Schwartz, many of us are on mm -hmm. her email list, and she had invited all the representative elects, the senator elects, mm -hmm. so it was great to have all those people in the room, but because the weather was really crummy that, that morning, they didn't get there early enough that we could really bend their ear before <laughs> the event started, and then we had to leave before they really got into the Q&A, which was really more with some other people, so it was one of those things that it wasn't a bad thing to have gone to, except it took a big chunk out of the day, but I really appreciated that GCC hosted it. The president of GCC is very interested in homelessness and food security, both. Um, brand new president there. And so it was it was a good experience from that standpoint. And it's one of those things where you go and you hope that maybe bring home a takeaway. It doesn't always happen, but um, that did happen. And I had previously that week been to a Habitat event associated with small houses and the struggles with trying to make that happen. In the community. So um, those were the committee type things that actually weren't committees at all that I went to because there they were. Other members? That was my member report. Well, I'd just like to say I'll, I'll take a moment and, and do a brief reflection. I, I, I've, you know, on Sunday afternoon, I'll be all done, with the exception of, you know, PBTA and a few other things, affordable housing trust, that sort of thing. But, but by and large, you know, things will be done. It's been a pleasure being uh, on select board with all of you. Um, it's been informational. It's been engaging. It's been uh, enriching. Um, it's been a pleasure to serve the community in this way. Um, I've been... Uh, you know, humbled at being your chair, and I'm hoping that I did a fairly decent job in sort of keeping us moving along in a reasonable direction and a reasonable pace most of the time. Um, but it's been it's been a tremendous uh, you know 
opportunity for me, and I hope that our community is better for our work. I think it is, and I really appreciate each and every one of you and the expertise you brought to this board and the, the time you spend and the uh, effort you make on behalf of our citizens. It's really phenomenal, and I'm not sure that uh, everyone always understands that as fully as we do as far as what it takes from a time standpoint and what it would take in the new council for the two of you that are moving on. Um, but I did want to take a moment and thank you all because it's been a pleasure serving with you. So, anyone else want to offer comments? Uh, I can go next. Um, we're, we're no reason to move in actual order here. Um, you know, I, as somebody who did choose to run and was elected to the council, um, I look forward to the challenges ahead and to um, the challenge of making our new form of government work as uh, I think the citizens envisioned when they passed the charter. Uh, I am beginning, you know, it's really just beginning to get to know a number of members of the council and uh, I have great hopes for the group being able to function well, but it is not going to be the same as the select board. Um, I think that I have in you four exceptional colleagues, and um, Mr. Slaughter having most recently, and Ms. Brewer before, provided great organization and leadership and moderation of the process and being um, exceptional spokespeople for the, uh, for the board and often for town government. Um, so um, it, it's uh, sort of this uh, strange time for me because I'm looking forward to what's ahead, but I look back and the dissolution of this board that I have enjoyed working with so much and really um, will miss this group uh, because I think it is an exceptional group. Just one? <laughs> Nothing original to say. I think, again, I'd like to join the, the chair and Mr. Steinberg in expressing my deep gratitude to all of you because really, I mean, I've enjoyed learning about town government. It's been an educational experience, but it's also been a pleasure and honor to serve with you with the town manager and town staff. And I you know, emphasize town staff and your predecessors emphasize town staff too because I think the ordinary residents don't realize how much work those people put in sometimes in the office but also meetings night after night preparing things and so forth and that's what makes the town I mean it's been easy job in a sense because it's the town runs so well it's a well-managed town we're an employer of choice people respect us we have good standards in performance and public services and everything else so that's been uh, you know the nicest thing for me I guess I have some mixed feelings about the transition because I, you know, I like the idea of a select board going back to the 18th century at a town meeting and so forth. But you know, if you're simply following tradition because it's there, that's not a very good policy. And I think, unfortunately, we simply reached a point where we couldn't fairly expect 240 people to master the intricacies of government for this age and the complexities we have. Uh, but that doesn't mean I won't miss town meeting. I don't appreciate the work that town meeting members did. And. You know, when I, when I think about the things I learned, I guess they're not very surprising either, but I think the most important one is that things look different from the side of the table. You know, a perfect example, you know, if things were as easy as people think they are, they would have gotten done a long time ago. And I think the example the town manager spoke about tonight with the station road bridge and the detailed memo we sent about trying to explain why we can't do this, why we can't do this. You know, you don't want to sound negative, but you have to deal with the realities of the law and what's practical and so forth. And so, you know, that brings me to a larger point that I'm, I'm sorry that in the, you know, in the transition, in the run-up to the transition to the government, a lot of the, the public debate seemed to be characterized by so much uh, distrust and hostility, you know, distrust of town staff, distrust of town government. But, you know, I think what we want is some kind of a situation in which we are always listening to the public, and the public is also listening to town staff and professionals. You know, it's a matter of of respect, but not on that in rigid, rigorous, uh, rigid deference. There's got to be some kind of a balance there. So you know, I think if we can all learn to be patient and work together, uh, 
you know, more profoundly insights, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, that's what, what it takes, really. So I hope that no matter how people voted back in March, they won't really wish this government good luck, because we've seen how good luck works in Washington and elsewhere, and it's not, it's not pretty. And just a historical footnote, I realized that uh, when the town transitioned from a three-member to a five-member select board back in 1954, the person who was presiding over that process lived in my house. So <laughs> <laughs> we're closing another historical circle there, and I'm happy to be retired and moving on other things. Ms. Curry. So um, I was thinking back to when I was first elected to the select board in 2014, four and a half years ago. I really didn't know what being on the select board meant. And despite having worked for the town and serving on town meeting and a couple of boards and committees, I wasn't clear what my role was. Um, and I remember meeting a couple of times with former select board chair Stephanie O'Keefe and asking her, so what am I supposed to be doing? What is the job? Because I felt like I wasn't doing enough. It happened to be summertime, so I didn't know it was coming. But, um, <laughs> And then, of course, I had this trusty guidebook to help me, the select board handbook, which I referred to many times, and I'm certainly willing to donate this for the archives. Yes. Maybe there's a bunch of these floating around in town hall. A couple, not many. And, no. no. Couple. Um, and I gradually um, learned a lot more about how town government worked and what the select board can do to both respond and initiate actions. So when I look back at what has made this a really wonderful experience, it's been the sense of camaraderie that we've developed as five, as a five-member board. So we have our five distinct individual personalities and opinions and views, and I probably know them so well sometimes I feel like I could stand up and give one of the other persons the talks, but, um, but we've learned to operate as a team and we've been able to trust each other to do our best, to step up when needed, and to offer support to each other during rocky times. So I'm leaving my time on this last ever select board in Amherst with gratitude for my colleagues on the board, for our patient and skilled town manager, and the great staff that allows us to do our work, and to the amazing, talented, and dedicated residents of our town that is now a city. It's been a real honor to have been entrusted with this position by the voters of my town. And what I wish for the new council is that they, too, will form bonds of trust and operate as a team as they lead the town into the future. Well, everyone should go back and re-listen to what each of you said because as you might expect, I spent more time working on that select board <laughs> memo than I oh, you did just on wanted my to go last. So I keep trying, and, and everybody has said such wonderful things. I think that um, I, I reflect back to, of course, I was just part of a campaign as well. And thinking back to why I ran for select board back in 2007, so many years ago. And it's interesting how the things that I cared about then are the things that this select board has cared about for a number of years focusing on the things we need to focus on, rather than, I mean, sometimes that involves wordsmithing, but still focusing on areas that are within our purview, not just things we're randomly curious about, and we'd love to have people come and talk to us about just for funsies, but we can actually do anything about. I appreciate that we don't just throw things on the agenda to say, let's, let's hear about that. It's like we are focused on what can we do, what's our role, um, and we listen. We listen to other committees, we listen to people out in the community, and we function as a board. And I don't have any idea how that's going to work on the new town council that I'm going to be part of. I have no idea how a legislative body of 13 is going to function as a board. And as everyone's pointed out here, we don't all think the same way by any stretch of the imagination. And we can predict to some extent what each other's going to say about things. And then we try and figure out our arguments to work with those things. But it's going to be a very, very different situation. It's not going to be a select board on steroids. It's just going to be very different. And one of the things that I always appreciated about town meeting when I was a new town meeting member back in 1999 is the people who really put in the work. And this select board, select boards I've served on now for the last several iterations, have always really put in the work. And I can't emphasize that enough. I think that's been brought up by others that people don't perhaps realize how much we actually do. In fact, 
I would argue many people during this most recent campaign had no idea what the select board actually does. And strangely, we seem to find ourselves incredibly busy doing it. So um, I like to think that we provided valuable guidance as part of the executive team. I have been told by people from another community that this select board was perhaps taking on a larger role than that individual thought we should, and I disagree strongly. The town manager we have might disagree with that as well. But it's been an interesting push-pull to be part of a six-member executive team where five of us are elected. We have the voting accountability, but we don't have the authority to make anything happen in all reality. And so we have had to work together as a team to make things work. And we do have an incredible staff who does a terrific job. And I just want to remind people something I'm constantly going to be saying moving forward for the public. If something looks messy or screwed up, it's just because we were super busy and we didn't get it quite right. It's not because anybody's trying to not get it done correctly. We have an amazing, dedicated number of people working on any number of things, and we could actually use more of them if we had the money to pay them. Um, and so all the work we've done together, I think, is incredibly important. It's going to be completely different moving forward, and I just can't appreciate enough how everybody, I, not to bring a sad note, but to bring a sad note in, we went through the death of our town manager together, and we managed and it was really hard for people on so many levels. And we couldn't be in the building with staff all the time trying to support them. They figured out great ways to support each other. And we supported each other. And I think we have done amazing work together. And I can only hope for the future council that they find ways to pull together, to work on things, to really reflect the values of our community the way this board has. Well, thank you all for your comments and, and, and uh, reflections. Um, you know, we don't often get an opportunity to do that. I think we think in these terms a lot, but we don't always get a chance to say it out loud because we have you know, business to attend to. Um, but since we've attended to the business this evening, <laughs> I think our agenda is exhausted. And so I would entertain, entertain a motion to adjourn it. There isn't any other thing we need to I don't do. want to deprive Mr. Spencer. <laughs> this is one last time. <laughs> it's so predictable. So, for the, I move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. And we are adjourned at 9 32. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.